Thailand has just recently experienced a tragic loss of her most advanced fighter, the JAS-39 Gripen C. The reason behind this crash is under investigation by the Thai government and the Grimpen International, the main dealer of the fighter. So in this video, we are going to list some of the most prominent reasons that is known to cause the crash of this fighter in the past. The crashing of Gripen is nothing new to the world. As one of the most successful export European fighter, Gripen has been used by many countries, and among these, major accidents will also occur throughout its career history. One of the most famous of these cases was the crash of the JAS-39 prototype, which happened in 1989 and was caused on film in Sweden, the very home country of the fighter. This incident was later found to be caused by a phenomenon called pilot-induced oscillation, or PIO. PIO is basically an incident where a plane began to shake uncontrollably as a reaction to pilot on input. As the reaction caused the reaction, every correction control that induced by the pilot has potential to shake aircraft away in opposite direction. The PIO occurs when the struggle between the pilot and the aircraft begins to spiral out of control. In many cases, these incidents may not be dangerous. On a typical flight, the PIO can be easily fixed by allowing the shake to simply die down before resuming the flight. However, jet fighters tend to fly at much faster speed than commercial aircraft and include a much more acrobatic display. This result in the loss of JAS-39 prototype in 1989, which has also happened again in 1993, with the Gripen A who are participating in the air show during the Stockholm Water Festival. There is also another reason that is known to cause a tragic accident during the early development of Gripen program, the software malfunction. Like most modern fighters, Gripen used relaxed stability design and a fly-by-wire technology which means that the aircraft has been made intentionally unstable and need to be additionally controlled by the flight control software to remain in the sky. Traditional aircraft with stable design will oscillate very little at certain altitude, and if so, will only be at a moderate level. The unstable design requires extensive adjustment and very prone to PIO otherwise. This means that the software malfunction in the sky aircraft can be deadly. However, the possibility of this scenario is very unlikely. The same limitation that is known to cause the early Gripen model software malfunction has obviously been fixed, and the RTAF Gripen are all newly made with less than 10 years usage, and thus the possibility of machine failure is very unlikely. Which brings us to the final cause that's known to bring the fighter down, the wake turbulence. When an aircraft, especially a jet aircraft, cruising through the air, they left behind a vortex of turbulence, which often generated at the tip of the aircraft, moving at high speed. This is because when an aircraft wing is built in a curve to generate a lift by allowing high-pressure air to flow below while a low-pressure fly above. Obviously, since air flows from high to low pressure, the air from above the wing would be sucked under and vice versa, the air from under would be sucked over creating a vortex of wind after the jet. Wake turbulence is known to be the cause of many air accidents in the past, especially in areas where many jet aircraft is known to be passing by, such as near the military airbase or the civilian airport. One of the Swedish Gripen crash in 1999 during a training exercise is reported to be caused by this phenomenon. Aside from these mentioned accidents, Gripen was also reported to crash outside of Sweden, most notably the two crashes under the Hungarian Air Force in 2015. So that's finished our list of the most common accidents that caused Gripen crashes in the past. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you appreciate our effort.